Now let's take a look at an OpenCL Hello World program, so sort of a first OpenCL type of program. So in OpenCL, we're going to have to always do a bunch of things to make any program work. First thing we have to do is set up OpenCL. And this consists of getting the devices in the platform, that is figuring out what things we have we can run on, maybe GPUs or CPUs. Then we have to create a context. So a context is created if we want to share between devices, but even if we're not going to share, we need a context for executing. And then finally, if we want to do anything on those devices, we have to create command queues. And these command queues are what allow us to submit work to the different devices. So we find all our devices, put them together into a context, we create queues for the devices in the context so that we can submit work to them. Now, once we've done that, we need to go ahead and compile our code. So we're going to create an OpenCL program, and we're going to build the program. When we build the program, it may go through and compile all the kernels in the program, and once we've done that, we can get kernel objects back. And these kernel objects are what we're then going to submit to these queues. Now, if you'll note, I say it may compile the program when we build it. A lot of systems wait to do the compilation until the last possible moment. That is, they do lazy compilation. So the compilation might actually not happen until you try and use the kernel if it's waiting for that. After we've done this setup, then we need to create our memory objects. This is how we get data back and forth. Once we've created our memory objects, we need to enqueue writes to them. So these writes are going to copy data from the CPU to the GPU. So we're going to write to a memory object, and if this memory object is on a device, this will cause it to copy it to the device. Then we need to set the arguments for our kernel. So up here we created a kernel from our program. It's going to have some arguments. We need to set them up. And then we go ahead and enqueue the kernel for execution. So we're going to take this kernel object, and we're going to put it into this queue for execution. And if this queue is pointing to a particular device as a GPU, it will go and execute that on that device. After we're done with our kernel execution, we need to enqueue reads. And just the opposite of these writes, these reads are going to copy the data back from the GPU to the CPU. And finally, we need to wait for all of our commands to finish. So this is the flow we're going to go through for writing a program. And in OpenCL, you usually do this. You'll do this part here about um, enqueuing the writes, setting the kernels, and doing the executions over and over again as you process your data in general. Now, a question about this. Why do we need this wait at the end here? Well, the reason we need the wait is because OpenCL is asynchronous. That is, we went through here, we enqueued a write, we enqueued a kernel, we enqueued a read. These all happen instantly. The program returns immediately here, but these haven't finished. So we need to wait here to make sure that this queue actually goes through and executes the things we put in it and finished it. So putting in this wait, make sure that the write finishes, the kernel's finished, and that the read is finished, so we actually get back the data we expect. Now, let's take a look at the actual program. All right, so here's OpenCL Hello World, and it's going to go through and calculate sine of x in parallel, just like the example we saw before. Let's go ahead and walk through it. So the first part here we're going to call CL get device IDs. We're going to tell it to get CL device type CPU, so we're getting CPU devices. We want one of them, and it's going to put it into this device pointer here. Great, so this will go ahead and get the device and the number of them we want. Next, we're going to create a context. So we'll call CL create context. Tell it that in this context, we want one device, and we'll tell it that it's the device that we just got when we called CL get devices. Now, this will create a context with just that device. But in order to use it, we need a command queue. So the next thing we'll do here is call CL create command queue. We'll tell it which context the command queue is for and which device it's for. This gives us now a command queue over here, which we can submit work to. After that, we want to go ahead and create our program. So we call CL create program with source, and we pass into this the context, so it knows which devices it might have to compile this program for, and a pointer to the source code. So here's the source code. This is our kernel code, it's just text. You could load it from a file, you could have it be in your code. This is going to create a program with this text. So this is actually pretty cool. Here's my C code. My C code is saying take this string and go ahead and compile it. So my program is doing dynamic compilation of this code here. Now that's a pretty neat way to do things. Now after I've created the program, I need to build the program. So when I call build program, this is when it's actually going to go ahead and start the compilation. Now the compilation may not happen now, maybe a lazy compilation, may not happen all the way down here until I call finish when I'm waiting for things, because it may do it as late as it can. But this will start off the compilation. Keep in mind that compiling programs is slow. 
So the first time you build a program, it's going to take a lot longer than subsequent times. Now once I've built the program, I can tell OpenCL to give me a kernel object to a particular kernel in the program. So when I call CL create kernel, it's going to look inside the program I just created. It's going to find the kernel with the name calc sign. So up here, here's my code. It's going to find this kernel here, and it's going to give me a kernel object that points to that. This is the kernel object I'm going to use to submit to the GPU device so that I can actually run my code. But before I do that, I need to get the data over. So I'm going to create a memory object. I'll call CL create buffer. Just creating a buffer. You can also create images. Tell it which context the buffer is in. This is important so it knows where the data may need to go. The properties of the buffer. Here it's going to be read-write. You can specify that it's just read if you want to allow the hardware to optimize the data placement. You're going to specify the size of the data as well. Now I've created a buffer. That is, I've allocated space on the device, but I haven't put anything in it. To put data into it, I need to call CL in queue write buffer, and this will enqueue a write to the device. So I'm going to specify the queue because now I'm enqueuing work to the device. So this queue here is going to have one device in it. That device is the device for this context, and that device is my CPU. So this is going to enqueue a write to that buffer on the device. Specify the size of the data, and I give it a pointer to where the data comes from. So this is a pointer to my data on the CPU. This is going to cause the, the OpenCL system to copy the data from the CPU to the GPU at some point in the future. Remember, I'm enqueuing this write. It's not happening right now. I'm enqueuing it. At some point, it's going to go through the queue for the device and actually execute. Next, I'm going to go through and execute the kernel. So the first thing I do is set the kernel arguments. So if we look up here at our kernel, we can see it has one argument, this global float data. So I need to set one argument. Here I am saying for my kernel, for argument 0, set it to point to buffer. And buffer is this buffer that I created with CL create buffer. So that'll tie this buffer that I created to the input of my kernel. Then I need to set the global dimensions. So for this one, it's going to run length. That means I need length, comma, 0, 0, that many threads I want to execute. And then I finally get around to enqueuing my work. So CL enqueue ND range kernel. So ND means n dimensional. In this case, it's going to be one dimensional. So here's the queue that I'm going to enqueue the kernel in. Here's the kernel itself, I'm saying it has one dimension of global dimensions. Here are my global dimensions. And I'm actually passing a null for my local dimensions. That is, I'm telling OpenCL, you go ahead and choose whatever local dimensions you think are best. And that works fine as long as I'm not doing a reduction or something that cares about the local dimensions. After I've enqueued the kernel, I want to get my results back. So I go ahead and call CL in queue read buffer. This is going to put a read buffer into the queue. Here's the queue I specify for my device. Here's the buffer I want to read back. Here's how much data I want to read back. And here's the pointer on the CPU where I want it to put the data. So this will go ahead and enqueue a copy to read that buffer back. Finally, I call CL finish. And this causes the whole thing to wait for everything to finish off here. And this is because commands are done asynchronously. If you don't call CL finish here, there's no reason to believe these things will finish. So when you execute this program, this command in Q write buffer, this command in Q kernel, and in Q read buffer, these are going to happen instantly. And they're going to happen instantly because they're not doing any work. All they are doing is putting these commands into the queue. At some time later, that work is going to happen. Calling CL finish, make sure that you wait for that work to be done. Okay, so if you look at this code here, what do we need to change to make this code run on the GPU instead of the CPU? Well, all we need to do is change the device type. So up here at the beginning, when we got our devices, we said get a CL device type CPU. If we just change this to CL device type GPU, it would have gone and found a GPU device, and all the rest would have worked. The beauty of OpenCL is I don't have to change my kernel, I don't have to change my data movement, because I'm just specifying this queue, and the queue goes to a particular device. However, if I have a complicated kernel, while it will run on both the CPU and GPU, you won't get optimal performance, and you may have to fix your kernel so that you get better performance on both devices. All right, so what did we do in OpenCL Hello World here? Had a lot of work doing the setup here, getting the device context queues, compiling the program, and creating initializing the memory objects. Most of our code was just this stuff here. For the actual execution, we enqueued asynchronous commands. Remember, we had to read, or sorry, we had to write the data to the GPU, then an execute, then read the data back. And it's really important to remember these are asynchronous. If you want them to finish, you have to explicitly wait for them to finish. 
And in a regular code, we actually do something, you'd usually do this over and over again until you got to your final answer. 